Are you wondering about the feedback you might have had from a screenplay competition? How's it, how's it? Chop screenplay prep and competitions. There are a number of online competitions available, notably the Nickel Fellowship, the Final Draft Big Break, the Austin Film Festival, the Atlanta Film Festival, Blue Cat. There are a few other countries that may offer some as well. Now, you can pay extra to get feedback from your reader as opposed to whether your screenplay simply gets put into the win pile or discarded. Paying for extra feedback is a, a gamble to a point. But what I would say is that if you've got the money, then I would do it simply because it's another opinion and better than your friends and family. It's going to be an industry-based opinion. However, that reader is a human being. They have preferences, bias, and they can get tired. And if presented with 20, 30, 40, 50 scripts to read on a weekend, they can get bored. All sorts of things can happen. So when you're looking at feedback from competitions, you want to take it with a pinch of salt. You need to scrutinize what you're being presented with and form your own opinion. Now, feedback will come in a variety of ways. Some feedback will give critique on character handling, dialogue, story, and whatnot. But it can also go into scrutiny as to how it might fit the market or whether this looks too similar to something else. And here's my caveat. I believe that when you are in a position like I am when I look at formatting, for example, or story analysis, you're already in that mode of nitpicking. You know, the tweezers are out and you're looking for mistakes. And sometimes we can go overboard. And it's not that we're overcorrecting such that something now becomes a problem. It simply means that sometimes things are corrected when, well, you could have got away without that correction. Now, when it comes to the opinion that your movie about dinosaurs has already been done before by that master filmmaker, Mr. Spielberg, does that really mean no one else can make a dinosaur movie? No, of course not. There are many takes on any subject you can think of. Consider this, art gallery. You walk into any one of them around the world and you're guaranteed to have landscapes. Well, guess what? Landscapes have also been painted for the past hundreds and hundreds of years. Do people stop painting landscapes? Do patrons stop enjoying landscapes in the gallery? No, not at all. How many skies and clouds might you have seen? It's always a fresh take, and sometimes if you're the sort of person who likes clouds and skies, you want to see more of them. If you're a dinosaur fan, throw the dinosaurs at me. Look at a TV show. You can almost say that with a series of six seasons that pretty much most of the episodes are going to cover similar ideas and themes. Sure, the action and the plot varies within. That's why you keep watching. But the feel of it is pretty similar. And that's why you watch it and you like it. So when critique comes that your screenplay resembles something from the 1960s, <coughs> yeah, bullshit. Um, don't worry about it. Now, if you are writing from scenes from the Bible, if you're taking one of the Gospels, it's been done a fair few times. And unless you're really veering from what's written in the Bible, you are essentially repeating almost verbatim. And another movie where everybody knows exactly what's going to happen and Jesus rises three days late, all of this, we know about it. So it's very difficult to represent that. And therefore, I would watch that, that when your script reader from a competition tells you that A Christmas Carol, uh, yeah, it's been done before, 
Well, yes, it's it's Dickens's work, so it's something that already exists. So that's that's where you've got to be careful. But essentially, if you're making up your own story, whether it's uh, science fiction, comedy, whatever it is, it's your piece of work. It's bound to be like something because we've we've had a century pretty much now of filmmaking. And a lot of the ideas are already taken. It's getting more and more difficult to be unique. I think science fiction is something that lends itself to uniqueness because there's a greater landscape and scope for, for story there. But essentially, as long as you are sure that you're not copying a prior movie, unless you've been asked to write a, a direct remake, you essentially want to make sure that you are writing your own unique story. If someone then pins an old movie on that, well, that's really nitpicking in my view. And it doesn't mean that a studio might not want to pick it up or that there isn't an audience for it. You can look at plenty of the blockbusters and realize that you know, King Kong has been remade a few times and there are many other movies with very similar themes, but they still work. With feedback, keep in mind that they're looking to be able to make comments. And there's an element of, if I write feedback and it's all positive, unless this is the most amazing screenplay ever, it kind of feels wrong to not be giving some negative to balance out that feedback. So you'll often find that the feedback always starts off positive and anything that's negative comes secondarily towards the end of of the document. Usually when you get feedback about your characters, character development, dialogue, scene flow, you'll often find that they may well be spot on and you might want to heed that advice. It depends to what level they're implying whether you need to do a complete rewrite or not. That's when you might want to get a second opinion. But any complaints about, oh, we've seen this before, I wouldn't worry too much about it at all. I hope that puts your mind at rest and you found that useful. I will see you in the next video. If you found that video useful, please consider liking and subscribing. That will tell YouTube that I'm worth watching and ensures I can produce more educational content into the future.